The Black Lives Matter movement has brought to attention racism in our policing, in the way we remember history, and in our society at large. It's also shining a light on the racism that's been ignored in our mainstream press for far too long. So a shocking example of this was highlighted by journalist Afua Hirsch, who on Tuesday shared a clip of an exchange she had with LBC's Nick Ferrari on an episode of Sky's The Pledge. Let's take a look. All over the world, statues are coming down. In just the last couple of weeks, New York has removed from Central Park the statue of a doctor who tortured enslaved black women. India has brought down Lenin, and Canadians have defaced statues of Queen Victoria. In Britain, Bristol has agreed to rename its famous music hall, removing the name of Edward Coulston, one of the nation's most prolific slave traders. Now it's time to take a long, hard look at other hugely problematic figures we continue to glorify, such as Horatio Nelson, oh, Cecil no. Rhodes, oh. and yes, Winston Churchill. I'm not oh. saying we should necessarily bring them down. Take a deep breath, everyone. You did but originally. all options should be on the table. As the global movement to re-question our so-called heroes shows, the thing that's clear is this. Doing nothing, burying our heads in the sand, and hoping this debate will go away is simply no longer an option. <laughs> Hi, Nick. F1. F1. I really like you, but I wonder if I can remind you of some words you wrote yes. concerning Britain. Please do. Britain. We have moved on from this era no more than the US from its slavery and segregationist past. The difference is that America is now in the midst of a frenzied debate on what to do about it, whereas Britain, in our inertia, arrogance, and intellectual laziness, is not. I don't write I that bad, do uh, I? <laughs> well, you could have been a bit snappier, but I won't worry about subbing it. Um, I'm delighted to do. Why do you stay in this country? If you take such offence when you see Nelson's column, if you take such offence when you hear Winston Churchill's name, who I would argue, if in the unlikely event that anybody want to have a poll, I would say probably 80 to 90 percent of people would say that Winston Churchill did a good thing. I'm delighted that I see you at these Thursdays. I'm delighted you opt to But if it offends you so much, how do you manage to stay here? That's, I find that a really strange thing to say. So there's nothing in Britain that bothers you. Sure, but I don't so want to pull it down. So why is leaving an option? But I don't want this to pull it down. This is my country. This, and the reason that I raise this critique but is not so because I hate your... Britain, it's because I care about this country. I mean, that is so shocking and, and, and outrageous um, to say, why, why do you stay here? Would he have said that to a white person? No. Um, important to recognise that. I mean, that that video, like one of the ones we, we showed, for example, of the, the police racism earlier, that's a clip from a couple of years ago, but it's only just now got the attention of, of the public. It's only now just got public attention. So Afua Her shared that on Tuesday, yesterday. It's now been shared, or well, it's been viewed three million times. Um, so only now is the pressure coming up. I didn't know, you know, obviously I didn't notice that two years ago. I didn't see that going viral on, on, on social media. As far as I can tell, Ferrari has still never apologized in the independence write-up of that video today. They say both Sky and LBC are yet to to comment on what we just saw there. Um, Aaron, your thoughts? Yeah, it's disgusting. He shouldn't be working in the media if that's what he thinks. If, if a person of colour says, I have an issue with a particular feature of this country, which, um, as, as Afua rightly says, I'm sure Nick Ferrari finds many th things sort of displeasurable about Britain. Nobody would say, well, you should piss off then. And the reason why people don't say that to him is because he's white. Uh, I think it's astonishing. If Nick Ferrari's not going to apologise for it, if Sky's not going to apologise for it, then they've got no credibility on the issue. Uh, I don't think Keir Starmer should be doing things in LBC with Nick Ferrari if you want to apologise for it. He's a racist. If he's not going to apologise for that, Nick Ferrari is a racist. If Sky aren't going to apologise for that, they are giving a platform happily to racists. Uh, not good enough. Really not good enough. You can give all the funding you want and the, the public relations, which Sky have done. Uh, but if you're not if you're not doing it on the thing that matters as a media company, your content, you're failing. Someone else who should apologise. Um, and who's, again, these, what, what's... What's ridiculous here is how overdue this is, right? This this was two years ago. Obviously, um, Afua Hirsch found it very upsetting, but the, the issue didn't get any traction. And we've seen over and over again that racism is completely acceptable in our mainstream press. And one place where it is acceptable over and over again is in the Times, Britain's paper of record. Um, so in Monday's Times, this, this isn't something that's just been unearthed. This was this week. Melanie Phillips wrote a column under the headline, we're giving in to the race revolutionaries. Now, it's already, you know, a, a headline that begs a lot of questions. But let's go to what was actually in the article because it's worse. Um, can we get up this quote? 
So yet, having been inculcated with the unchallenged belief that they are victims of white society, black people believe that any disadvantage they may suffer is not the result of bad luck, circumstances beyond anyone's control, or perish the fault, their own behavior, but must be the product of white racism. So that's Melanie Phillips, regular columnist at the Times, in Britain's paper of record, um, right after a Black Lives Matter movement, which is putting racial justice you know, at the top of the political agenda. And she thinks it's acceptable and the Times thinks it's acceptable. I think it's, you know, I think we should focus on the institutions, not the individuals, because I don't think Melanie Phillips would mind if you called her racist. But, you know, uh, the paper of record should be held to higher standards, right? And this this idea, she's saying that black people believe that any disadvantage they may suffer is not the result of bad luck, circumstances beyond anyone's control, or perish the fault their own behavior. So she's, she's basically saying all, all black people think they're victims of racism when actually the reason they have disadvantages in society is because they didn't you know, bother to work hard enough. Um, there were some changes to it. So the Times did realize that they probably had crossed a line here, but they were really minor. So where it originally said black people believe that any disadvantage they may suffer is not the result of bad luck or their own behavior, et cetera, et cetera. It's changed to too many black people believe that. So the, the, the concession they've made is that instead of saying all black people, they're saying too many black people have this sort of victim complex where they think that any misfortune is is because of of racism, which obviously is is dismissing the fact that racism is significant in this this country. And they remove perish the fort presumably because they thought it was just too too dismissive and and awful. Um, the Times also had a leader today that was basically you know a, a commentary on on the statues, and I was sort of expecting them to say you know let's let's be careful about. You know, figures like Winston Churchill who have complex histories, et cetera, et cetera. But no, they decided to do an outright defense of basically slavery and colonialism, saying at the time everyone thought it was fine. Um, so we shouldn't judge people by today's standards. You know, so so they were basically saying that people like Rhodes, they should stay up because everyone thought at the time colonialism was spreading civilization. So who are we to judge? Aaron, what do you make of of that? Philip's comment piece, and I suppose you know what what the Times deems to be acceptable. Obviously, a Murdoch owned paper, like he's he's someone who's used to publishing, you know, out and out awful racism. But that's supposed to be you know an establishment, yeah, middle class intellectual outlet. Well, you know, I mean, she's not alone. If you think of the Sunday Times, Rod Little, um, uh, you know, there's a range of sort of figures like this, Charles Corran. Um, but I think, yeah, I think the fact she's been quoted at length by Anders Brevik probably tells you, you know, um, what you need to know about the content of her politics. Uh, but what I find interesting, again, is that like, you know, Darren Grimes, like Nick Ferrari, you know, these aren't kind of crazed political figures on the on the sort of periphery of our conversation as a country. She's on the BBC every week. You know, she goes on BBC Question Time. She'll be on the Daily Politics and so on. And again, she's a really racist lady. You know, she was the lady that coined the term Londonistan, uh, I think in the mid 2000s. She will quite actively say that Muslims aren't welcome in, in Europe. Uh, she says it probably a bit more explicitly than Douglas Murray. Uh, so, you know, she's, she's got views which I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really say fit in in a sort of uh, a free democratic society. Uh, but she she seems to be fine. She seems to be immune from any criticism. And what's interesting is she wrote for The Times. She wrote for, I think she still writes The Jewish Chronicle. You know, these are publications which have called out racism in the Labour Party. Some people will agree on, on, on whether or not. I would say that their level of um, criticism is, is inadequate to the scale of the problem. People can disagree about that. But surely we can all agree that somebody who says this shouldn't be writing for those very same publications. Uh, really just stinks. Mm -hmm.